Hello, and thank you for joining me for the fifth episode of The Corner Office. Today, we're in slightly overcast Aspen, Colorado, here at the Mountain Shelley Resort, which is actually a family-run business that our next guest, Frank Melville, president and chairman of Phone Suite, is part of. So please, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, Frank, welcome to the fifth episode of The Corner Office. Where are we today? We're in, seems like... Someplace in Aspen, perhaps? Yeah. This is my uh, family's hotel in Aspen. Happens to be where I grew up. I, uh, my room's right down there. And uh, uh, had a great time growing up here, obviously. My parents were busy trying to make a successful first business venture and uh, didn't pay any attention to me. I had four sisters, and that kind of helped because they were typical teenage girls. So. I pretty much had all the freedom you'd want, starting from the time I was about 10 years old until I went off to college. Um, I got some great stories there we can talk about someday. I think I was 13 years old before I realized that uh, not everybody grows up in paradise and is able to enjoy one of the most beautiful outdoor places in the world. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's a beautiful spot. I got to tell you, it's, it's nice to be outdoors after being cooped up so much lately. Yeah, and it's a beautiful, you know, spring, late afternoon. Oh, great place this is the fifth floor uh fifth floor of the of the of the place has views out over the town um back behind us and then up here is uh, uh uh aspen mountain right in front of us a beautiful view as well yep i love uh, some of the local billboards that you've got there as well that's that's great it's really brings a little sense of home to the to the area so yeah, well, that's not actually a billboard. That um, usually has some Armani or Saks Fifth Avenue or, or Gucci kind of display on there. Or, you know, it's following a celeb around town. And I understand you paid dearly to get that up there for the duration of this interview, from what I understand, which is quite pricey. What are you drinking tonight? Well, you know, uh, my grandpa always said, Frankie, water is the best thing you can drink, but don't always demand the best. <laughs> and so with that, uh, today I'm drinking a Guinness. It's a nice afternoon, evening beer. I enjoy a glass of wine with a nice dinner, and I'll enjoy a whiskey or a scotch. But right now, it's Guinness, the milkshake of beers. How about you? Excellent. Excellent. Well, so today I'm actually drinking a, uh, I'm drinking a Creature Feature from Good Robot IPA. here. Oh, nice. At yep. And I've fallen that up. In my Alexander Keats, which is a, a Nova Scotia beer as well, I've got it in that mug today. So I'm, I'm doubling down on Nova Scotia this week. So, <laughs> Wow. And I'll bet you'd finish those two before I get halfway through this Guinness. Potential. Potential is there. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's get right to it, right? Tell me your best dad joke or pun or, or something clean that you've got going on. Yeah, well, I've got to tell you, I was an excellent dad. My kids are in their 20s, and, uh, and and I know I told a lot of great dad jokes, so I went to the source to ask them which the favorites were, and uh, you can see on the screen me texting my daughter to ask her uh, <laughs> uh, what dad joke I should tell, and so that pretty much tells the story. I, I uh, without question, you know, when I drove by a cemetery and I said, boy, people are dying to get in there. Um, my kids have both pulled my finger when we were working outside and I pretended that, that I heard it. Uh, no question about that either. But uh, really, I, you know, instead of telling a dad joke just because I realize I'm so bad at it, I just want to share a book I've been reading with you. Uh, this is a book about anti-gravity, Steve, and I just can't put it down. <laughs> you know, I've, I've heard the masses are reading that. That's great. <laughs> yes, it's quite popular. <laughs> Oh, very funny. <laughs> All right. So uh, in England, they probably bought that book by the pound, I'm imagining. Oh, my gosh. Right <laughs> off of the top of your head. You know what? Your kids love you, I'll bet. That's, that's, you, just, you just wait. When they're in their 20s, the things they're going to say to you. Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of features, but quick humor is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You, you do. You absolutely do. So tell me about your best hotel experience that you ever had, Frank. Yeah, so the best hotel experience is fits with a lot of our family's favorite experiences, and that's when what we got exceeded our expectations. And uh, it, this is, it's unusual, I know, and I've got a couple I want to tell you, but this first one, we were 
in the in the northeast and uh, I had booked the the cheap place which I often do on this little family excursion to go look at colleges and the, this place was a rat hole and it was under construction and you drove in the garage and you wondered if the car wasn't going to have something fall on it you go upstairs and everything's torn apart and mildewy and uh, um, my wife turned to me and said no go to a different go to a different hotel on the list and I can't even remember, I hate to say the name of the, of the place, but when we called them up and explained our predicament, they said, oh, we know all about that. Yeah, we've had a number of people call us, come on over. And, you know, they knew our names an hour after we got there. They knew exactly how we were feeling as we walked in the door. It was just a one night stay, but they took care of us as though we were part of their family and as though we mattered to them. So that, that's it. The exceeding the expectations that we had for that stay w was probably our best single hotel experience. Now, in general, uh, like we try to do here at the Mountain Chalet, but also uh, traveling, we like a place where they do remember us and they do treat us like family. So a timeshare down in Mexico that my parents have that I, I'm lucky to get to go to every once in a while. I go maybe every third or fourth year with, with my mom and, and uh, they still remember me. Hmm. And that I think makes a big difference. Good stuff. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes. So, you know, tell me a little bit about what Phone Suite's been doing to, you know, combat the COVID-19 crisis. Right now, I think we're in week four, week five of this hit in North America. And, you know, what, what have you been doing to help you and your clients out, you know, during this time? Yeah, we have been doing some things to help clients out, but, but it actually started at home. So I think a week before our governor asked us all to start working from home if we could, and, and two weeks before they, they shut down everything and said, don't go to work at all unless you're absolutely uh, uh, vital. Uh, we, we came to, up with a plan to have everybody work from home. So that's the first thing we did. The second thing is that um, obviously we're a small company. So we immediately calculated our runway, You know, how many months before we run out of cash if things stay this bad. And, and, and then we started looking at things we could do. And the, believe it or not, for a little while when I realized that we're, we do have a manufacturing plant in our facility, and I realized we weren't gonna be manufacturing anything for a little while, we actually looked at whether or not we could convert to manufacturing PPE, masks or respirators or something. And unfortunately, the, the, the cost wouldn't be picked up by anyone else. So it was sort of a financial suicide if we had done that and the wasn't clear materials would be available. So we, we didn't end up doing that, but, um, but we did then quickly look at how could we help our customers. Uh, once we knew our staff was, was safe and we knew that the company had some good runway, what can we do to help the industry? And this isn't a surprise, but many vendors like us and safety net access were asked by m many of our customers for some kind of forgiveness or redu reduced uh, services because Let's face it, they were only going to have 20% or maybe no occupancy. Mm -hmm. Why pay full services? So we came up with a program for that. And then we started hearing about problems people might be having related to voice communication since we're a telecom company. And we came up with a, a three different programs, all of which uh, enable someone to keep going with their voice needs for no money for at least three months. And, and, and one was totally free. We came up with a way where if you have an old phone system and you just, you needed to close and you couldn't figure out how in the world you were gonna get the phone calls answered automatically and transferred to where they needed to be with a property shutdown, we offered a free uh, service for up to three months where we never charge you anything, you don't owe us anything. It's just, we'll do that for you free for three months and then give you your phone lines back. Um, so that. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I was just saying that's that's a great initiative. I mean, being able to offer that service at a time of need um, without you know anyone having to to worry that there's gonna be a bill or a large bill at the end of it is definitely, I'm sure, appreciated by your clients. That's great. <clears throat> yeah, um, and we've done that for some of our resellers as well who, who have been struggling to keep their doors open. And uh, you know, we, we quickly applied for that CARES Act. Uh, I, I have a small regret in that many of our resellers didn't know how to do that. We could, could have helped them faster, but we did start helping them as well so that they could get that money. And, uh, and now, we're, now we feel comfortable, you know, it's a new world. Everybody knows that we're, 
all the old rules are out the window and if you're in manufacturing of a commodity or something that people don't absolutely need right now you're in trouble and uh, we're at least right now we feel settled we feel comfortable we are we're go going along smoothly so what else can we do and we're we're doing some programs where people are allowed to for example better themselves since we, we are fully staffed and everyone's paid and everyone's getting their insurance for some time to come but we don't have a full load of work so people are are um, taking online courses um, trying to better themselves and uh, even our holdout employees like the, the people who said I'll never use office I'll never use teams I'll never use zoom yep. well we're getting really good at those now and in fact we may become more of a virtual company after this is all over because we've gotten really efficient at it and it's a great tool and yeah. if someone can work at home and be just as efficient and we save the cost of that office space that's a wonderful thing as well a good friend of mine uh, greg Beatty, uh actually wrote an article in the uh bangkok uh, newspaper here recently about that may be the new norm about actually letting people um expand and, and work from home and and that that is going to be normal and, and accepted and i know for example even in my discussion with donna hale uh previously is that with so many people working from home you know a lot of these organizations hotels etc who have had a lot of that you know that last resistance so to speak with letting their staff do that have actually embraced it now um so i think you know, being that remote and having that remote piece is going to change the way the industry, actually all industries move forward. So, well, I'll echo that from our side because we did have that feeling, right? You got to be careful. You got to see people regularly. You got to check up on them. Mm -hmm. It's working great. It is working great. I'm, I'm, I'm super impressed with our staff and of course the technology. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wasn't a, a Zoom user before and here I am now hosting a some sort of weird drinking podcast from one. So <laughs> I, I'm well, going to have a goer now. <laughs> I do need to address that. You know, I'm delighted that you invited me on. Um, and, and I can't think of the number of people you must have gone through that said no before you landed on me. But um, only I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I watched the first four. I mean, I'm so impressed with some things people said. Alex Eidelstein talking about landing at home and being on furlough and saying, how am I going to strategize the way I use this time to better myself and to better prepare for when I come back? And I'm like, wow. I mean, the, the people you've had on have been just amazing, A to Z. Uh, and I figured you need one out of five, right? You can have one throw away out of five. So here we are. By the way, also, you know, you said wear a, a nice shirt and a jacket and i guess i didn't quite hear you right it's fine you're doing okay you might be a little you know is it is it too warm though i mean here we yeah are. you know what it, it is Beautiful. it's too warm <laughs> hey just as long as you only take the jacket off okay Everything thank you fine. thank you for letting me do that <laughs> a little free advertising there if you've never skied before give me a call i'll put you up no the uh I'll just tell you that the HTNG COVID-19 calls have been fantastic. There are hoteliers and technology providers on those calls, and, and I've participated as both. But it's also comforting to hear what everybody else is going through. A very interesting thing from today is that because occupancy is so low, there are these new protocols that the brands are coming out with where they say, look, uh, someone checks out of a room and for, uh, for 48 hours or 72 hours, no one's going in that room. They won't even send the housekeeping in. Then they send housekeeping in, and then they leave it, they leave it untouched for another 48 hours, for example. Um, so it's not just spraying things down, et cetera. It's, it's interesting new ways to face what we're up against and come up with creative ways to work around that. Now, I hope some of these things don't stay, but, uh, but start thinking about, uh, what is it? Start thinking about this thing and all the things you could do from this thing that you can't right now. For example, your TV remote, right? I mean, that's gonna be a big deal when we get back into hotels. I'm gonna look at that TV remote, maybe I'll get out my gloves and my sani wipes and stuff to turn on the TV, or maybe I won't use it at all. Um, guest room telephone, obviously, 
we all know that's not used like it was before, but there's an interesting company out there called Fetch, and they have created an app that becomes your guest room telephone. Uh, they, if they um, come right now with that at industry, now would be the time when people would want to uh, adopt something like that as an alternative to touching that 15 year old guest room phone that's been sitting on the nightstand. Yeah. Having well, God knows what happened. And in your technology, of course, with phone suite, I mean, you guys can integrate right into that, right? With the software. Correct. So during the recession, Steve, uh, a lot of companies were spending all their time and focus on trying to bring those sales back. And companies like ours, you just aren't going to bring sales back. And it was a, a smaller drop, right? Um, hotels dropped from like 70% occupancy to 50 kind of generally. The revenue dropped 50%. Well, they're all the way to zero now. So we don't know how long this is going to last. Hopefully it climbs out quickly, but you can't spend money on sales and, and have it pay off right now. I just don't think that, that the amount of money it would take to incrementally to bring in a sale that you weren't going to get anyway is going to pay off. And we took this same approach during the recession, and that's when we developed voiceware. We took all of those resources and applied them to additional R&D, additional engineering, and we developed voiceware, the software-based phone system during that time. So we'll be doing some of that too, uh, depending on how this lasts, we'll be starting to look at, okay, we are going to have to cut back in sales and marketing, not, not that we'll disappear, but let's use that money and focus it on developing something really cool that helps us as we come out of this. Don't know what it is yet, but, but that's where our minds are at. What's the first thing you're planning on doing both personally and professionally, you know, after we emerge from this? Well, I'll start with the personal and then with, Without a doubt, I am jonesing to play hockey. So I play hockey a few times a week, and it, I call, I'll call it therapy. In fact, at work, on my Outlook calendar, I've got these time slots blocked off, and it says therapy on it, and the whole staff calls it Frank's therapy. You step on the ice, or, or anything that you really enjoy doing as a sport or a hobby, but for me, I step on the ice, and every issue at work just disappears mm -hmm. for for an hour and 15 minutes, there's nothing else. And it's great exercise, it's great fun. So that's the thing I'm looking forward to most. And in general, it's it's getting out and doing uh, fun and competitive recreation again. That's gonna be great for me. So that's the personal side of things. Uh, and professional perspective, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go visit every one of our partners and say, hey, uh, we've got some ideas how we come out of this. We've got some ideas to help you save money. And we want to we want to reaffirm that we're in it for the long haul, that we want to hear their ideas. Uh, we obviously need to stay in business, but we are going to do a lot of traveling to, to visit major brands, management companies, some of our bigger reseller partners, and, and just chat about what our strategy is together. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to get on airplanes carefully, but we are going to get on airplanes. And I'm looking forward to, as you said, talking to Larry, uh, going to high tech, the big SNA party, just getting back to HDNG meetings, you know, networking, that's great for business, but it's also the sharing of the ideas. And we're getting some of that done through Zoom, but we still have to see, meet each other face to face. That's part of the social aspect. Where do you see the industry going from here? You know, a year out, two years out, three years out? Yeah, these these uh, these calls with HTNG and talking to other hoteliers is very interesting. It's still we're still up in the air as to what aspects of the way we're reacting now are going to hold throughout eternity, maybe now. And and you know, there's a there's a hotel that now they they were talking about this morning on the HTNG COVID nineteen call that it has a nurse in the lobby. They only allow one guest in the lobby at a time, and the nurse does a you know, temperature scan, uh, uh, ask them about things that might be related to exposure and one person in the elevator. Now, all of those things can't translate, but there'll probably be some things that we don't let go of. After 9-11, we had TSA forever and it's not gonna be that severe, but there will be some things. And maybe there, very quickly, we never see, as I was saying before, I've never seen another TV remote. Uh, I do know that, that short term, you know, a year out, we're still going to be struggling, uh, you and I, because the hotels will, will still be focusing on what do I have to do, not what I should do in terms of technology refresh. 
there will be other things way ahead of that on their list and rightly so and then add to that more of a, a feeling that they need to create reserves to get them through the next COVID-19 before they start upgrading their Wi-Fi or, or upgrading their, their voice or, and things like that. So I think we have to start thinking about that from our perspective. For the hotel industry in general, things are going to be a little bit different. A lot of the IoT, uh, self-service kiosks, things that they don't prevent interaction with other humans, but they do prevent the, the requirement to touch something that somebody else has touched before. I think we're going to see some of that last for, for a number of years. And then three years out, uh, fingers crossed, but three years out, let's hope that we feel about COVID-19 the way we felt about the recession by, by 2015. And that was, um, you know, everything's back to normal now. It probably wasn't as bad as we thought, even though it was as bad as we thought while we were in the middle of it. I think that's where we're headed. Yeah. No, I, and that's that's a great perspective. It's it's what what are we going to get hit with that's going to stay? The TSA is a good example of that. Um, internally, we've talked about you know how can we, um, you know, kind of kind of expand our services so that we're providing you know better direction and better guidance on what that next step is, because you know one thing our clients are great with is is putting heads in beds. Um, one thing they're, you know, that they're, they look to us for is how can we advise them on the technology side to, to, to kind of guide them in the right direction for whatever solution they need and where the industry is going. So I think that that's going to be one of the key things that we've got to all work on is coming out of this. How can we all be better stewards of the new normal? And better, yeah, better help our clients meet the, the needs perceived or otherwise of the traveling public because they don't need to or want to become technology experts. They're looking to us to do that. I, I agree. Absolutely. Well, great. Well, listen, Frank, it's been great. I mean, as I said, I, I'm sure I've got at least a small burn here from the sun here in Aspen. I mean, I am, I am, you know, pretty uh, fair skinned as you guys can tell. And uh, I, I need an SPF at least 2,000 in order to get through the regular day. I, I've burnt in fog before. So, but thank you for getting me outdoors. <laughs> Absolutely. This has been my pleasure. I, I can't think of a better time to spend a, a dusk hour. And I can't believe you can get burned at dusk. But yeah, I guess I can believe that. It, it happens. It's, it's happening. It happens. <laughs> well, this has been a pleasure. Great. No, I appreciate the time, Frank. Thank you very much. And, you know, I look forward, you know, safety and of course, we're, we're close partners with Phone Suite and we look forward to, you know, helping guide or acting as Sherpas, so to speak, in the new norm. So, you know, together. So I, I, I'll let you carry my bag any day, my friend. Thank you. Same goes. And I, I do want you to know also that um, I am not trying to disrespect Snappy at all, but um, he's not wearing his mask and so i sat at a different table i was going to sit next to him but it, it really kind of scared me a little bit so yeah he's, social distancing from snap yeah you know one thing about squirrels right you try to teach them social distancing and sometimes they just they just don't get it it's a little like i said before it's a little nuts so it's a little nuts <laughs> i knew that was coming well done <laughs> all right thanks frank thanks for being here thank you hey. thank you Steve. clink clink Thank you very much for watching the fifth episode of The Corner Office. A great big thanks to Frank Melville, President and Chairman over at Phone Suite, for spending his afternoon with us. Additionally, a great big thanks to the team here at Mountain Chalet in Aspen. This is truly a great venue, and I mean, look at these views. They're spectacular, especially this billboard right here. <laughs> for more information on Phone Suite, please visit their website at www.phonesuite.com. Com. Additionally, for more information on Safety Net Access, our services, and our products, please visit www.safetynetaccess.com. Until next time, be safe, be healthy, and be well. Cheers, everybody.